Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for Kremty News First at Four. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Tom is off tonight. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. Seven people have been injured after a multi-car crash that led to the closure of Freya Street near the I-90 on-ramp. Police say a commercial dump truck hit several other vehicles before then hitting the Liberty Taxes Service Building and a Dutch Bros coffee stand. Grab 2's Morgan Trout spoke to people who saw the crash today. She joins us live at the scene tonight with what they're saying. Morgan? Mark Whitney behind this red tape is what is left of a Dutch Bros coffee stand around noon this afternoon. Officers tell me that a man driving a 10 wheeler towing industrial equipment actually rammed into numerous cars, curbs and two buildings. A tractor trailer ripped across South Freya Street, barreling through two buildings. Spokane Fire says six vehicles were damaged by the crash, but people were trapped inside a coffee stand. Both buildings have sustained uh, catastrophic structural damage. Spokane Fire adds that there were seven victims, ranging in age from children to adults. Only one of the patients had serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The owner of the coffee stand says one of his employees suffered a broken hip. We got back from orientation and I thought I needed some coffee, but I was lazy, so I didn't get up and go, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. The driver was arrested by the Washington State Patrol for suspected DUI. Spokane police say the area will be closed for the next couple of hours while the investigation continues. They also add that the man may be charged with vehicular assault, but they don't know to what degree based on the injuries of the patients. Reporting on the Lower South Hill, Morgan Trout, Crem 2 News. All right, Morgan, thank you very much. Also tonight, we are tracking another crash on North uh, on 195. This is in Spokane County, about two miles south of Spokane. It was a semi truck also traveling downhill that apparently couldn't stop in time. The road has been blocked from another accident as well. So to avoid cars, the semi truck then drove into the ditch and rolled over. Right now, we're told there is a partial roadblock and the estimated time for reopening is still unclear. In other news tonight, WSU head football coach Nick Rolovich said yesterday that he would follow the governor's mandate for higher ed employees in terms of the vaccine. However, there was some confusion on if that meant that he was going to get vaccinated or seek a medical or religious exemption. It is widely believed that Rolovich had a personal exemption in the past to not get the vaccine, which is not an option in Inslee's new mandate. So if he were to seek a medical or religious exemption, it would be investigated by the state. As they have said, they will only take sincere exemptions. Today at practice, Rolovich was asked to clarify his comments from yesterday and if he would actually be getting the vaccine. Here's what he had to say. Seemed to be a little confusion yesterday when you were asked about the vaccine. You, you said that you were going to follow the mandate. Does that mean that you're going to get the vaccine? Well, I appreciate it, but I'm going to follow the mandate. Is there a reason you, you don't want to specify one way or the other? No. You're the state's highest paid employee. Just what kind of message do you think you're sending by not saying what you'll do in terms of the mandate? I'm going to follow the mandate. And have your personal, I know that you're, you're going to keep your feelings about it private, but have those changed at all with how much the Delta variant has become deadly over the last few weeks? I appreciate it, Brent, but I'm going to follow the mandate what, what they tell me to do. So the new Washington State COVID-19 vaccine mandate is among the strictest in the nation. It goes into effect statewide on Monday. The vaccine mandate applies to most state school, health care and child care employees. There are, as we said, religious and medical exemptions. However, employees can seek those medical and religious exemptions, but they have to talk to their employer's human resources office for accommodation. Starting Monday, North Idaho College will be requiring multi-layer face coverings. Face coverings will be required at all times inside NIC buildings when two or more people are present. The college president said the decision was made in consideration of the Delta variant, the increase in COVID-19 cases in Idaho, and a number of COVID-19 patients in the Idaho ICUs. Well, a possible shakeup in leadership at the Moses Lake School District is coming at the end of the month. The Moses Lake School Superintendent, or School District rather, had a special meeting today to work on terms of mutually separating with the district superintendent. This comes after an investigation into financial concerns. Our own Ian Smay breaks down now what lies ahead for the district. 
Moses Lake Superintendent Joshua Meek and the Moses Lake School District Board of Directors are currently in negotiations about the terms of him leaving his position. If the two sides can come to terms on a mutually agreeable separation, that will be effective at the end of the month. The pending separation agreement stems from a series of audits. According to the school board, the results of the audits brought up questions about financial decisions, including some involving Meek. According to the board, they included the payment of special project stipends for some employees, including Meek himself. The board also claims Meek did not provide receipts from his district credit card in a timely manner. Meek allegedly did not follow district policy to reimburse the district for personal purchases. Another claim is that Meek did not report his time off work correctly. The board unanimously passed a motion today during a special meeting to continue negotiations with Meek. In a press release from the district, Meek is quoted as saying, The Moses Lake School District has an incredible future for its students, staff, and community. The district has been a staple in my life for the past 18 years, and I will miss it incredibly. He also committed to a smooth transition. Board President Vicki Melcher is also quoted in that release. She said in part, quote, A decision by the board to work towards separating Dr. Meek from his superintendency was made knowing it would be best for the district as a whole at this time and under the circumstances. If the two sides can reach an agreement on those terms, Meek's last day will be August 31st, the day before the first day of school. We don't know yet who will replace Meek, and the board would have to vote on the terms of the agreement before it is finalized. In the studio, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. All right, let's talk weather now. It is Friday. Temperatures are in the 70s and there is rain in the forecast. Meteorologist Michelle Boss in for Tom tonight. She joins us from the Outdoor Weather Center. Michelle, normally Whitney and I would be kind of bummed out that we're tracking rain for Saturday, but not right now yeah. because, my goodness, we certainly need it. Yeah, so the rain is going to be much welcome. However, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, and we may see that in especially some of the steep terrain and over the burn scars. We expect some slow-moving thunderstorms overnight and through Saturday. So in those areas where you have burn scars, uh, where it's hard for the soil to absorb a lot of rainfall at one time. We could see some flash flooding, so flash flood watches are in effect in the areas shaded in green through Saturday. Don't think we're going to have a problem in the city here in Spokane, but again, in some of those outlying areas where they have had the wildfires and in some of that steeper terrain, uh, some slow moving thunderstorms could cause some flash flooding and uh, you know, we need the rain, but not all in one place at all at one time. We're just starting to see the activity pick up. We've had cloudy skies and much cooler temperatures today. Some of those thunderstorms are starting to fire up. We're not quite as concerned with the lightning this round because we are expecting a good dose of rain along with those thunderstorms and the cooler temperatures are also helping out as well. Speaking of cooler temperatures, 74 right now in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, 73 in Sandpoint, even below 80 degrees in Moses Lake this afternoon, 84 degrees in Lewiston, one of the warmer spots out there, uh, also in the lower 80s in OMAC. We'll likely see some of that rainfall moving into the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area later this evening, so early evening you should be fine, but later in the evening you're going to be going out tonight, you may have to be dodging some rain showers. Here's a look at the next three days with below average temperatures. We do expect pretty wet weather with hit and miss showers on Saturday with a high of only 70. Things should dry out on Sunday, see some sunshine, breezy conditions and a high of 76 and looks like another cool day to start next week. Feel like fall with highs only in the lower 70s. Mm. Wow, I guess we knew it was coming. Michelle, thank you very much. Well, working to make this the best first day ever for area kids heading back to school. Soon kids will be returning for in person learning and many will need a little help to get all the back to school supplies they need and Creme 2 can help with that. So please join us in helping provide backpacks and all the supplies by donating to the Creme Cares Tools to Schools campaign. Creme 2's Laura Papetti joining us now with how to help our kids. Well, I have some good news to share with everyone. We've received about $33,000 in donations. That's substantial. That is huge, and we're so appreciative. So thank you if you've already given to Creme Cares Tools to Schools campaign. However, we would like to get to about $60,000 because we want to make sure that we provide about 2,000 backpacks and all the supplies to go with it so that when kids walk in for that best first day ever. Uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we make sure they have everything they need. It not only gives them the tools to succeed, but it gives them confidence to sort of stand up straight and feel really good about being back at school. A couple of ways you can give. We've made it really easy through the rest of this week. So through the weekend, you can go to any area Starbucks. They have scan codes. They have them at the register and on your coffee cups. Easy to do with your phone, just scan it. You can make a donation that way. You can go to any area office depot. They are taking uh, uh, donations, monetary donations through the end of this month. Sooner is better than later because we need to get those backpacks and supplies bought. So again, Office Depot, and you can always give on crim.com. We really could use your donations. In fact, the kids could really use your donations as they're getting ready to go back to school. 
I'll send it back to you. Like in Game of Thrones, where they take a giant sword and they melt it down and then cast it. If you don't cast swords, you know, it's, it can't be done. But it doesn't matter. It looks cool. People are like, I think I want to pick up a hammer. Yeah. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. All right, no, this is not Hollywood. Those are actually real swords forged in fire. A Coeur d'Alene man won a popular show on the History Channel. So next on First at Four, we take you behind the scenes to show you what it takes to be a bladesmith.